Welcome to Advanced Aerospace Structures. Uh, we'll be covering the motivation course overview and application. Um, and uh, I am Vinay Goyal. I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Puerto Rico, Mayagüez. So my first language is actually Spanish. Uh, I have a doctoral degree from the aerospace and ocean engineering at Virginia Tech. And I have an extensive experience in aerospace systems including uh, aircraft, launch vehicle, spacecraft, and commercial applications. Uh, particularly, I have extensive experience in the composite designs, bolted joints, bonded joints, dynamics, fatigue, fracture, buckling, and a lot of different um, arenas that correspond to thermal analysis, heat transfer, systems engineering. So I, I do have a good uh, understanding of the systems. I do have hobbies like basketball, chess, hiking. I love eating uh, different foods uh, and I love the beach. Uh, and so that's, you can email me anytime if you wanna reach me. Um, motivation, the motivation is very simple. Uh, we have to design aerospace systems and we have to learn how to analyze them. For this particular course, we're gonna go a layer deeper than a previous aerospace structures course. In this course, we're gonna go a lot deeper into actually analyzing these structures and designing them uh, to be able to survive the loading conditions they'll experience in service. And we'll be covering a range of topics. Uh, and the idea here is anytime you wanna design a system, you wanna make sure it's lightweight, but you also wanna make sure it's low cost and it's reliable and robust. There's a lot of, uh, the design space is infinite. Let's just put it that way. You can select different materials, different uh, design architectures. You can uh, choose uh, thicknesses and, and geometries that will get you there. But the bottom line is not one design alone will get you there. And so you have to really find the one that's the best for your application. Part of the idea of this course is to make you think that way. It's, go it's going to push you in that direction a little bit. And that's my goal and I hope we can get there. Uh, here's a motivation uh, from an example of an aircraft's Boeing 787. The wind damage grounded a Boeing, uh, the new composite 787 Dreamliner, new at the time, and here is the source for that. It occurred when the stress on the wings was well below the load the wings must bear. Damage occurred on both sides of the wing body joint, so this joint right here, the outer wing as well as the inside fuselage. So the wing damage really here uh, damaged the, the Boeing there. And that was during a ground test. That was found during the ground test and it bend, uh, that ground test, the purpose of that test is to bend this wing upward close to 30 to 40 feet. I discussed that in a previous aerospace structures course. And that's why it's so important that we then analyze the testing configurations before you test them and that you understand fully the failure modes that could occur in your design. And the idea here is that when you do design something that you have enough confidence that when you step into testing, uh, that you are likely to pass. Now it's possible that you did not design with everything in mind and we are humans and that's expected. So when you step into the ground testing, it's possible that new failure modes that are un unanticipated will show up and maybe the failure will occur like in the Dreamliner. Well, in those cases, that's fine. That's the purpose of that test. The purpose of that test is to expose failure modes that you had not <coughs> accounted for. And so, my point there is, it's okay to fail. What is not okay to do is to fail knowing that you could have failed, number one. Number two, it's important that you don't fail in service. People will die because of your actions. And so it's important that whatever decisions we make in the design process, we have fully validated that. And that before I step into test, I've been, I have considered everything. Why, why? I mean, I don't wanna fail in test. It's okay if you fail in test, but I don't want to. Why? Because it will set the program 
and the schedule and the cost, it will be a setback to those arenas, those aspects, schedule, cost, and, and, and where the company wants to go uh, for those goals, to meet those goals. And so that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, and that's why it's so important that we understand how to analyze the structures for all the various loading conditions to be experienced. Here's a launch vehicle Falcon 9 uh, here, and this is all from the public domain. So I'm not revealing anything from any company. This is straight from the public domain. Uh, the Dragon CR7 failed close to the end of stage one burn, a strut holding an internal helium pressurization pressurization tank broke during second stage initialization at T139 seconds. And the resulting overpressure caused the second stage to blow apart. So you can see here the failure mechanism is quite complex. Um, to really investigate these failures can be quite complicated. But analysis can be very helpful in these scenarios. Here's another anomaly where the helium was being loaded into the rocket and the engineers found that the comp composite overwrap pressure vessels were the source of the failure. Now, again, that's where, where analysis can be of help. Here you have the spacecraft JWT program, the James Webb Telescope, and this particular telescope has cost billions of dollars to the government. Now, I understand that we, we, we do get some money to try to design these structures, but we also have to ensure that we minimize costs to the government because any failures that occur during the design process is not only a setback for uh, the country, uh, for whatever country you're from or for this country, but also it's a setback to the goals that we have in terms of advancing technology. This James Webb telescope is much more powerful than the Hubble telescope. It's going to provide much more refinement. And so just imagine that we have, uh, uh, we're so behind now that potentially, I'm not saying it's the case, but potentially some of the technology could be now outdated already because we're so behind. So what we want to do is really learn the idea of using analysis early in the design process, learning how to use it effectively, and being able to apply that in a way that can be very helpful to design a test program that's successful. The thing I wanna point out, and I point out very often, is that when you're designing a system and you need to test the system, there are two different things. You have to test on the ground. You can, you can test also, you can have flight tests, but to demonstrate margins, structural margins and thermal margins and vibration margins, you have to test on the ground. That's the bottom line. And because the systems that we're analyzing often are flying, that means that I need to figure out a way of connecting the flight conditions to the test conditions. Because you cannot test exactly like you fly, but you can test like you fly. You can test like you fly. And so what you want to do is use analysis to validate the analysis processes that are anchored to test so that you can then use it to analyze the flight conditions, which are not exactly the same as the test conditions. And so analysis becomes your transfer function. And that's why it's so important to get the analysis right. So the objectives of this course is to then advance to study advanced aerospace structures, to learn analysis and test methodologies, to study advanced aerospace structural systems, including topics that are quite complex, like dynamics, fatigue, and fracture. So the outline of this air, aerospace structures course is gonna start with an uh, intro to some ideas from a more basic aerospace structures course, we're gonna then go through the composite override pressure vessels. I selected it because it's a very complicated problem and it comes up a lot. There's a lot of things that occur there. We'll then cover a more specific application like unvented honeycomb and then an application such as bellows. And then from there, we're gonna to go to buckling, stress concentration, shear flows, I'll have invited lecture for that, bonded joints, bolted joints, and then structural dynamics as it applies to aircraft, launch vehicle, and spacecraft. For structural dynamics, 
we're going to cover a very specific application, several applications. We're going to learn how to do random vibration analysis. We're going to learn how to do steady state vibration analysis. We're going to learn how to do a time domain analysis and a frequency analysis. So we're going to do a lot there when it comes to uh, dynamic analysis. We're going to also learn the couple loads analysis because when you have a payload attached to a launch vehicle, the interaction between the two can be quite important. So from that perspective, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to cover fatigue, and then we're going to cover fracture. In fracture, we're going to use a tool called NASGRO, so you can learn how to predict failure of the systems. We're going to cover a little bit of structural optimization, so you can learn how to optimize a structure with very limited tools from what we can use within uh, the toolbox that are given to us. And I'll cover a little bit of additive manufacturing and some aerospace applications. So those are the very top level topics that we will be discussing. In this aerospace uh, outline that I have described is really based upon the foundation of a previous, uh, of a previous, uh, uh, the, the previous aerospace structures course. And in that aerospace structures course, I wanna quickly touch upon the topics that were covered uh, so that you're aware. There's the overall design process for aircraft, spacecraft, and launch vehicles. And then there's a top level view of solid mechanics and how that applies to finite elements. And then I cover the failure modes that could occur in metals and composites. And I cover a range of them. And then I covered an overview of aircraft, spacecraft, and launch vehicle components and the design drivers for them. And then I went into material selection and testing for aerospace structures. And then I went to aerospace structures, load sizing and design. And then we went through regulations by the FAA, AIAA, uh, SMC, NASA regulations in the arenas of analysis, qualification test and acceptance test. And from there, we learned about structural failures, failure investigations, and then I cover structural mechanisms such as clamp bands, bearings, springs, and things like that. Then we cover some case studies. <coughs> okay, so that was the basis for that other course. And now we're building upon that. <coughs> okay, so in that course, uh, we're really looking at getting on this understanding, very top level understanding with some applications. Uh, and the course materials for that course were based on my book to some extent. And when I cover shear flow, it will be based on my book. Uh, but this book is not required for this course. Uh, it was required for a previous course, okay? Um, and so if you wanna get this book, you will have to uh, ask me for it. <coughs> okay, so additional books I recommend that you purchase if you would like. This is one book that you can purchase. And then you have these additional books that I recommend that you purchase if you're going to work in this arena of aerospace design. And that's Spacecraft Structures and Mechanisms by Thomas Sarafin. Uh, aircraft Structure for Engineering Students, uh, Megson. Uh, so my, my book will be complementary to that book, for example. Airframe, airframe Structural Design by Michael New. And um, Aircraft Airframe Stress Analysis and Sizing by Michael Moore. So those are the books I'll recommend. 